live from Nashville, Tennessee, it's theCUBE. Covering Commvault Go 2018. Brought to you by Commvault. I hear the train coming. <laughs> it's rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sun sign since I don't know when. Oh, you're watching theCUBE and we're in Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, Johnny Cash, <laughs> he played his last days here, and uh, I'm Stu Miniman with Keith Townsend and helping us to round up the program. He's wearing a He Wore Black <laughs> shirt. Yes, I am. Which is a Johnny Cash tribute band, and my only guest of the day wearing cowboy boots. A friend of mine, happy to help uh, us, us round things up, David Chapa, who's the founder of the CTO Group, also known as Mr. Recovery in the industry. David, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, CTE Group. CTE Group, I I'm made, sorry. I haven't made the O level yet. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm confusing <laughs> things with the CTO advisor here. I know, you here. got an O, you got an um, E, we have uh, almost all of us. We ours. got all these TLAs, uh, <laughs> TLAs in the industry here, but uh, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. All right, so, uh, my first time at the Commvault show, I've known Commvault for a lot of years. Yeah. Uh, Keith's been here twice. What, what's your experience been at the show so far? Uh, this is my first time to the show. Um, so far it's been very impressive. This uh, showroom floor is, is huge. Um, I like how they set it up. They, they want to set up like it's a street, and uh, they, they were successful. You know, you can walk down, you can stroll down the street, you can go and see different vendors. Uh, I thought it was, uh, as far as the design, I thought it was really, really good. The yeah. information's great. Well, what I found engaging is what I'd say. That's what you want with a show floor. The booths did pretty well, but there's little pavilions where they're having lots of sessions. Every time I went by, there were people there. There's labs, people going away, and there's media and podcasts and food and beverage and all that stuff there, but a, a nice, dynamic uh, and uh, re really kept it going and that's, that's been, the show itself uh, I found to be engaging. Uh, there's a lot going on, a lot of announcements. Uh, what's your take on Commvault? Well, I think that their, um, their transformation, what they've been talking about, you know, transform the company. Uh, I heard a lot about, um, you know, people uh, tag us as a legacy company, we're too expensive, we're this, we're that. Uh, I heard Bob say a couple times, you know, what, what 20 year old company is not going to be called Legacy? You know, there's some truth to that. Um, but they've, they've done, a, I think, a pretty good job of kind of laying out what it is they plan on doing. They've, they've tried to simplify things. Um, you know, I, I, look at, I look at different companies and I often say this to, uh, to clients. You know, there's four things you really want to worry about in, in life when you're running a business. You want to make money, that's one of them. Uh, you want to make sure you have good customer satisfaction. You make sure your people are happy and you want to make sure you, you make it easy for people to do business with you. And I think Commvault's really taking a hard look at the, how do we make it easy for them to do business with us? And so they've, they've reduced the, they put all the products on one, on one slide, which I thought was pretty impressive. Uh, they've also simplified the pricing, which I thought was uh, pretty impressive. Uh, so I think what they're, what they're doing, they're, they're trying to make some good strides uh, to make those things happen. And you know, they're focusing on the customers as right. a result. So Keith, I'm going to let you ask some questions, but you know, we talked some in our opening mm -hmm. analysis, but after talking to customers, talking to their execs, what, what are you walking away with uh, for, from this show? You know what, some companies are transformed because it's just the natural flow of business. They're forced into competition. Uh, they, they have to react. Convox, transformation is not a fluke. From the top down, this is not silos, this is not individual product silos uh, competing in their individual silo. We talked to Al Bunt, the COO, and he talked about doing the right thing by the customer because it's the right thing to do. And if you don't focus on money, money will come. I think uh, we all like to have those idealistic views, but I think it's something that on the surface, at least from the show, is working for Commvault. They, uh, they are transformed. This isn't, I, I ran a backup project, my first, uh, one of my first major projects of my IT career almost 20 years ago, and one of the big costs was Commvault. Needless to say, any technology, much, much different company dealing with today than I deal, dealt with 20 years ago, and uh, I, I think I go as far as say Commvault is a much different company than three years ago uh, versus the first Commvault Go. Yeah, um, coming into the show, certain things I was looking for. 
How do they play in the cloud? Okay, are they actually doing things with AI? Or as uh, I, I saw this joke on the internet that was a zoo uh, took a donkey and painted stripes on it and said, uh, typical AI startup VC funded. Uh, you know, not actually a zebra. Uh -huh, and, and the like. Uh, and I, I tell you, the questions that I had, I think Commvault had a good, solid answer. And the, the, the open this morning, we said, there wasn't anything that jumped out, was like, wow, I've never heard of that or thought of it, but, you know, good customer base, you know, strong brand in the industry, and making a lot of the right moves to get there. Um, the announcements this week, anything jump out at you? Uh, any, anything surprise you? Uh, nothing surprised me. No. Um, but, uh, you know, the things that jump out, because my focus with the CT group is on uh, really disaster recovery, business continuity, oh. um, helping customers really understand the value of the data and how to recover that, um, that data. I shouldn't say the data because it's about recovering the mission of the business, whatever that may be. And one of the things that I, that I, I liked, what I, that, I, that I heard this um, uh, yesterday and today was about their um, recovery readiness report. I thought that was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Their, their interface is, uh, is very clean, um, and a customer can drill in to the RPO that they want. Uh, and I, I got a demo uh, earlier from one of the uh, developers and uh, that was one thing that stood out. Uh, because for me, it's all about the recovery. Uh, backup is great, I've been doing backup for a long time, but if you can't recover that stuff, man, they, you know, what someone said that when a backup admin is, is a great job because no one knows your name <laughs> until you can't restore the data and then they know your first name, last name, and middle initial. And my <laughs> middle initial is A, so you can imagine the kind of names I was called when that stuff wasn't happening. When you can have a plan, and that's the idea, disaster recovery plan, and then you can respond and not react, that's where you want to be. And I think that's what, that's what Commvault needs to deliver to their customers to be successful in this transformation, is how can, they, how can they achieve that plan and how can they be responsive and not reactive? Because reactive is when you make mistakes. So, I think one of the things that I tweeted earlier was that Commvault isn't uh, asleep at, a, at the wheel. Now, and we asked Al a challenging question, which was how do you provide these new features that it's expected in the modern backup uh, data protection platform, but yet please your legacy customer. I mean, some customers don't want to change. If they didn't have to upgrade their backup software uh, for three years, they prefer not to. So one of the things I thought is interesting is that they're, uh, they're walking a tightrope, and Dave, I'd like to hear from you on, on your thoughts around their ability to please their traditional legacy customer while attracting net new customers. There's that word again, legacy. Now it's with the customers. I, I think um, as you look at the market, and you guys know this, um, I had a conversation with a, with a healthcare uh, uh, customer months and months and months ago. Uh, actually, I think it was about two years ago. And uh, the, the CTO was, was really uh, a legacy-minded person. Why should we go to the cloud when everything is working? Why should we do this when everything is working? Well, the conversation I, has, I had with them was, your business is going to be accelerating, your competition will be accelerating, and you need to keep up with the competition by adopting some of these things that will help you move faster, smarter, and make better decisions for your business. So those legacy customers at some point will have to make a decision that we need to be competitive in the marketplace and we're going to need new tools. Now, for those customers that are, that are using Commvault today, well, Commvault sitting there with their, their new platform, the, the, the transformative uh, ideas they have to help them get there. So, you know, to try to answer your question, it's really hard. Um, there will be legacy customers, of course, but those legacy customers need to survive and you got to survive by, by, by responding to the market uh, demands. It was interesting for me to look at this ecosystem here, uh, talk about the partnerships, uh, talk about how they're playing in multi-cloud. There's potentially a lot of threats to a Commvault out there. 
not just you know, the startups that are coming directly after this space uh, that are well funded, but you know, the same people they're trying to partner with in the public cloud, well, it's tough partnering with the public cloud. They are driving a lot of innovation in the industry in doing this. What does Commvault need to do to stay successful, uh, you know, grow their customer base, and you know, accelerate uh, through this transformation? Well, I, I, saw, um, I saw the interview you did with Al, and uh, the one thing he said was, listen to the customers. And that was one thing I would tell them too, is you have to listen to your customers. And you have to comprehend what they're saying. Not just understand what they're saying, it's sort of two different things. When you can comprehend what someone's saying, that means you can repeat that with the same passion in your own words. So listen to your customers, really comprehend what their challenges are and, and how you can help them either with the existing product or the features that you need to develop uh, to help them get over that, uh, that, that hump or that challenge they have. So th that to me is the biggest thing, uh, listening to the customers. That's going to drive the market. Yeah, David, I'm, I'm really taken aback about the amount of change, the amount of conversation around multi-cloud. Uh, we had a great conversation with the Tech Field Day guys a little bit earlier about data management. One of the things that I'd like to hear from you from your industry perspective from CTE and helping customers with data recovery, and not just data recovery as you mentioned, business recovery, are customers hearing the message from the convolts of the world that your cloud strategy, your, your multi-cloud strategy starts with data, data management, data protection. Is that, is that actually resonating with customers or is that a niche, I think, uh, awareness? It depends on who you're talking to. So, <clears throat> for me, I think any, any, any organization that wants to win the hearts and minds of the mid-market and the lower end of enterprise, you have to really start thinking more business-centric. That's, that's the focus of what we do. We, we look at business-centric IT, and what does that mean? Well, that means that you throw away the lexicon that we're so used to using in IT, and you really start to try to use the terms that the business will understand and comprehend. And the way you do that is by asking a lot of questions of the business. What's important? Why is it important? What's the mission? I, in IT, we should not be the ones that own the data, that own the application. We are the stewards or the custodian of that. And as the steward and custodian, we do know we, got, we have to protect it. We don't necessarily know why, but we need to understand that. And then, when we have that conversation with the, with the business, then we can start talking to them about recovering the mission of that particular business unit. It might be two servers, it might be 40 servers. So, is that message resonating with, with companies? I think, I think Commvault needs to do a better job at communicating at that business value level. And I think that this conference, this, this launching pad, if you will, is a, is a starting point for them to do that. Um, more companies want to understand how they can solve real business problems and challenges and not hear how fast your feature is or how, how cool uh, this new widget is that you have in your product. They have real business challenges they, they want to solve those challenges. All right. Well, David, that critical analysis is one of the reasons that I asked you on the program. Keith, it's been a pleasure doing the show uh, with you today, as always. But before I let you off the hook, David, <laughs> this is our first time doing the show in Nashville. I've barely gotten to see much of the city. Uh, Keith and his wife are checking out a little bit of it. I did get some Nashville hot chicken. But for those of our audience that maybe haven't been to Nashville, what are they missing? They hear, you know, culturally, musically, and, and the like. Wow, what are you missing? Well, um, you, there, there's a lot of great music. Um, you can't find a bad musician in Nashville. Mm. Um, if, if you do, uh, they're not in town very long. Um, <laughs> Run them out but, of town. Yeah, but Nashville is a very, very cool town. D go downtown Nashville, you walk around there, at 10 o'clock in the morning you're hearing music. Uh, live music, I mean, where you walk in. Um, the countryside's beautiful. So from a Johnny Cash perspective, you can go to Hendersonville and you can drive by where Johnny Cash's house was at, right on the uh, Old Hickory Lake there. It's burned down, but it's still, the foundation's still there. It's a lot of rich history in Nashville. You, you got to come check it out. This is one of my favorite cities, man. And 
There's a reason why I, I changed my flight to get time to this show. I was already here in Nashville last week playing a, a music gig. I thought I could play the Commvault gig for a little while. I could do that. Excellent. So when you close the show, what was the closer for a Johnny Cash tribute band? For me, it's, uh, it's the Man in Black. All right, well, I appreciate you joining, David. <laughs> for Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman. For the whole crew here, thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to check out thecube.net for all of the coverage from this show, all the shows will be at the future. Feel free to hit us up through social media if you have any other questions. And once again, thanks so much for watching theCUBE. <laughs>